Hey guys, welcome to another video. And today we're looking at pressure, right? So pressure is the effect of a force on an object's area, right? So if you apply pressures, you're basically looking at the force per area that you're applying the pressure to, right? So the area is important in terms of pressure because it can be a great force that's being applied but if it's being applied to an area that is wide, then the pressure is low, right? But if you apply that great pressure, that great force to a small area, it creates a greater pressure, right? So let's examine that, right? So I thought you probably have noticed some videos where persons actually can throw a needle, right? So those monks, throw a needle through and actually cause it to break a glass, right? So why do you think that is a needle can do that trick, right? And that's because of this equation. So we want to get a high pressure to hit the glass in order for it to, to break. So to get a high pressure, right, the force that we throw will be great, but this part is important. Right? So we reduce the area that we are applying that force to, right? Because a needle has a very small tip, right? So that small tip area, when applying that force, because area is inversely proportional to P, which is pressure, right? So once you have a small area with that force, you are going to get a large pressure. Right, so that's the basis on why the one of the reasons why the glass will break. Right, so the unit of pressure is pascals, which is capital P, common A. Right, or some books will have it as newton per meter squared. So newton for the force, meter squared for the area. Right, so let's look. So this equation works with when it's a uh, solid object. Right, so any solid objects. Pressure can be defined by the force divided by the area, right? So if we have a box of dimension, length 5 centimeters with 3 centimeters and height 2 centimeters, also, and has a mass of 0 0.5 kilogram, cal calculate its pressure it exerts on a table, right? So the key thing here is that the box that we have, right? If we place a box on the table, the only part that touches the table is the, the length of the table and the, and the width. The height of the table does not apply to the area that the, the box is being covered with, right? So in this case, the height of the table the, the box is not important, right? Because the area that the box covers would be the length and the width, right? So because we're given mass, we know that the mass can be used to find the weight, which is, the, which is a force, right? So we find weight by multiplying mass times g, gravitational acceleration, which is 0 0.5 times 10, which we get 5 newtons, right? And the area, right? So remember, this is 5 centimeters width length so we have to change it to meters so we divide by 100 we get 0 0.05 right and then we have 3 in width so we divide it by 100 again we get 0 0.03 and then we multiply both so we get 0 0.0015 meters squared right so now we can find pressure which is force over area the force is 5 newtons the area is 0 0.0015 right and our pressure would be 3333.33 Pascals, right? So that's how we would find any area, any pressure, sorry, for solid objects. So let's go to pressure in liquids, right? So pressure in liquid is affected by two things. So it's the density of the liquid as well as the depth in the liquid that you want to find the pressure for, right? So those two things are important, right? And so if we look at the same container, so let's say we have a beaker, same size beaker, two same size beakers, put the same amount of water in, 
and we have the same mass object, same size, same mass object at the same depth in the liquid. So the pressure that the liquid exerts on this object, right, would be dependent on how far it is down the liquid, which is the depth, right? Because whatever liquid is above it would cause it to actually pressure down on the, the object, right? So if the object is close to the top, there is little bit of water there, so it's, the pressure is less. If it's way down, then we have more water above the object, so it can cause it a greater pressure, right? Now, another thing that we can look at is the situation where this beaker is open and this beaker is closed, right? Now, the question is, if it's open or closed, will the pressure being exerted when they're at the same depth will be the same? And that is no. Right? Because when the beaker is open, we have air particles, right? which you have learned that air particles produce its own pressure, known as air pressure, right? or the atmospheric pressure. So this pressure, once the object is open for fluid, will cause the excess pressure to be applied to the liquid, which will apply then to the object. Right? So therefore, in open containers, then the pressure would be applied would be total adding the atmospheric pressure to it as well. So pressure in liquid, so once it's closed, air particles not able to apply their pressure to it. So that pressure is rho GH. And rho, which we know is the density of the liquid. G is gravitational acceleration, which is 10. And H represents the, the depth, right? So once it's closed, pressure is rho GH. If it's open, then pressure is rho g h, which is for the liquid, plus the atmospheric pressure that's being applied by the air particles, right? And the atmospheric pressure at room temperature is 101.325 pascals, right? So let's look at applying this principle of pressure in liquid to a little demonstration that we normally use. All right, so... Uh, Simple demonstration that we normally use is having a, a can that has three holes at three different height of the can, right? And we continuously add water to the can. So because of that, right, the water has its pressure, right? So based on the pressure, it's going to actually cause the water to spill out at different distances, right? So remember, the further you go down, the more pressure you have. Right? So if it has more pressure, then the bottom one will cause the water to spew out further. Right? The further you go up, the closer the water will be spewed to the, to the can itself. Right? So the bottom one has a greater pressure, so it causes the water to spew further. The top one has less pressure, so it just causes the water to spew at a shorter distance away from the can. Right? So, the pressure in liquid is a principle that is used in everyday life, and a primary one is the hydraulic systems, right? So the hydraulic system, let's look at the ones, the ones in a car, right? So the hydraulic system in a car, this is just a simple diagram of it, right? So we notice that this side, the area of this tube, smaller, than the area of this tube. So let's see why that's the case. So in this entire casing, we have the hydraulic liquid or the brake fluid that you would call it, right? So the purpose of it is to transfer the pressure that is being applied from one side to the next side, right? So the same pressure that's being applied right at X here would be the same pressure that is felt at, at Y, right? Because the depth of both of them will be the same. So x is equal y equal h. So both x and y have the same depth in the liquid. So it doesn't matter the shape of the liquid. Once the, the depth is the same, the pressure is the same, right? So if we look at piston A, piston A is connected to the brake pedal, right? So when you apply a force to, to this pressure, Right? So you apply a great force, right? So you want to stop the car suddenly. So you put on a great force on the pedal, right? 
then you notice the area of this piston, right? So this is called a piston. So the area of piston A is very small, right? And based, because this is a solid, we have that. So the pressure that's going to be created will be great because we're using a great force, right? And a small, it's a small area, great force. So therefore your pressure increases. So that increased pressure will be projected onto the liquid, right? And that high pressure is transferred over to Y because it's the same depth of X and Y, right? So now we have a great pressure now going up on your piston B that's connected to your brake, your brake pads, right? So those are the things that closes on your wheel to stop it, right? So on in this now, we notice the area is, is big right so the area is big so the purpose of this area being big is because we want a great force right so a great force in order to clamp onto the wheel to stop it so if we need a great force right and our pressure is great and area is great to find force it is p times a so if p is great and a is great then we're going to get a pressure that is also great because all these two are direct proportional to F. So whatever happens to P and A will happen to, to F as well, right? So that's how the hydraulic system in a car works, right? So that's why when you barely step on the brake, the car takes a while to stop if it's going at a fast distance, right? Because that small force will cause a small pressure. And that small pressure here will cause a small force being generated on the disc pad, right? So that's how the hydraulic system works, right? And I hope you guys understand about pressure in solids and pressure in liquids today, right? And see you guys next time.